Hi, this is John Vernon with Poets and Quants. Welcome to another edition of Friday with Sandy's. That would be Sandy Kreisberg. Hi, everybody. Sandy Kreisberg here, the HBS guru. Uh, coming to us from Australia, Sydney, Australia, Declan Shore. And uh, John and Declan, why don't you introduce yourself? So, Declan, you, uh, you have a 740 GMAT, a 3.75 uh, GPA in electrical engineering and finance. Uh, you've been working for the major telco in Australia since graduation in 2015. Okay, that's and good. You're good, an good. ambitious guy. You want to get into Stanford, Harvard, or MIT? Well, I think I think I think a lot of schools are just going to like the Australia stuff. They they, they don't get a lot of candidates from uh, Australia, and uh, and it's just an attractive you know part of their international footprint. Uh, so that's a real plus. I think they're going to like the fact you work for a, a leading company there. And uh, tell us uh, what you do, Declan. Um, so when I started at Telstra, I came in as, a, as an engineering grad, uh, and I quickly moved into this uh, sort of engineering slash finance role. Um, yeah. We run the major vendors that supply Telstra, like uh, Ericsson and Cisco, um, and we do big cost-cutting initiatives across the engineering division. Yeah, okay, that's great. You're dealing with suppliers and you're cost cutting and you're a cost internal cost cutter. So that's a very attractive profile. I, I think your chances at uh, HBS are real good. Uh, the thing about what, 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 what's the issue with Stanford, John? From well, being... you have to have a really unusual story, and I know what you always say, you either have to be a victim or you have to help victims. Yikers. You're, I'm glad you're around to remember my great bon mots, yeah. At Stanford, <laughs> you, you need the X factor. And uh, so w w what's the most powerful thing about you that we don't know? Yet? Um, uh... Um, I, I have a, I guess it's, it's sort of like a, a growth background. My, my grandfather was a farmer in uh, um, South Australia. My father went to the big city and he um, did a, um, studied in Sydney and then built a company um, from scratch in Adelaide. Uh, and then I'm sort of going further afield to study in the US. So that's kind of a, I don't know, it's a growth story. Yeah, and you, and you, also teach, you also teach robotics and STEM education at the Stemzel Foundation. What's that? Yeah, so for um, so that that when I was back in Adelaide, I haven't um, done it for a couple of years, but um, uh, when I was back in Adelaide, we uh, we ran a, a I guess it was robotics training mostly for um, women uh, when they were in you know the last few years of high school. Uh, so the problem is that, that you know they, they don't see engineering degrees as something they can get yeah. into. So okay, that's a, okay. That, okay, this is a while ago, and the music's over, mm. but the melody lingers on. Teaching women robotics, particularly women who are somehow victims or helping victims or whatever, that begins to sound very Stanfordy, okay? Mm. But I don't think there's, and that's something you should play in your application uh, a little bit. Uh, I think Stanford's going to be hard, although they may just the Australian thing and the solid, solid 375, 740 GMAT, Australia. Uh, telecom guy and and then you want to be uh what, what are your goals uh so <clears throat> short-term transition into a sort of mbb um like consulting role uh ideally in this kind of telco tech space M mbb mckinsey bain and bcg right yeah yeah and then right. after that sort of uh thinking telecom executive and then up to sort of ceo kind of level if you know in the 15 year sort of time horizon yeah. Okay. That's that makes perfect sense. Could you put some um, impact beyond yourself spin on that? This impact beyond yourself is another one of these key phrases that John Byrne will remember when I when I lose more of my mind and say, "Hey, John, name some name some smart things I ever said." <laughs> um. I think uh, part, part of the reason I like working in a telco is that, you know, rolling out things like 5G, so we've been working on 5G a lot lately, um, is going to change the whole way that people act and operate uh, across um, the entire country. 
Uh, and you know, as you push that out, you push that out to you know the lower income areas and all that sort of thing, uh, and that sort of rise, raises up the okay. economy. That, that's that's, problem, that's you know? okay. It's, it's not great, but that's a that's a orientation. That's a spin. What you really want to do as an executive is make communications. You want to expand the footprint. You want to make it cheaper. You want to make it easier. You particularly want to serve underserved communities. Although my, you know. How many people in Australia have a phone? <laughs> My guess is a lot. Uh, yeah, well, Tel Telstra is just the largest telco. We have about 50% market share, and we have 26 million phones. Uh, there's only 23 million people in Australia. <laughs> well, some people like me and John have three or four, but uh, I've got two landlines, for instance, but I get it. <laughs> But um, one of the things that Telstra does do is we, we spend uh, a lot of money serving rural communities. Yeah, um, yeah, that's what you want to do. You want to underserved then. rural communities, uh, you know, particularly, uh, you know, people, people native Australians, uh, you know, first people, first peoples, whatever, whatever the PC lingo is. Aborigine, is that a word you're allowed to use now? Or not? I think it's aboriginals, yeah. Aboriginals, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, they they need phones, uh, so that should be part of your vision. Uh, okay. Any uh, other advice, uh, Sandy, to uh, let him stand out from the pile, or do you think just coming from Australia with those numbers? And Australia uh, with these numbers is good. You, you've and what you you what you the way you spin yourself is you you've got a techie you've got a hybrid training. You're interested in technology and finance. You want to be a telecom executive who really has an impact on access, low pricing, quality, uh, you know, and that, that's enough. I mean, that should be enough for, and with a 375 and a 740, I think your chances at Wharton are pretty good. They, they, they go for a guy like you. I think your chances at HPS are pretty good. When you say pretty good, what do you mean? 30, 40? Well, that's, we always go through this. Yeah, I mean, 40% of the people at HBS flunked the interview. So, you know, you can never say anybody's chances are 80% HBS. You right. Can, and, and believe me, you can flunk an HBS interview by uh, scratching yourself the wrong way. You know, uh, very small things can really kill you there. For Stanford... You're a super solid guy. There's no X factor. They may, they, they, they may like you anyway. They may just say, look, if we're going to have to take a white male, we might as well go to Australia. You know? <laughs> if you're putting a gun to my head, <laughs> if you're putting a gun to my head and we have to admit a toxic white male, let's go to Australia. <laughs> Who knows? They may be nicer there. So you might have a chance at Stanford. And I know he wants uh, MIT as well. What do you think about yeah, MIT? Boy, MIT would go for the engineering thing, would go for the telecom thing. They'd go for the fact you want to be a, a, you know, a techie executive. Uh, uh, yeah, a, a MIT would really go for this. You're, you're, and also you're, you're kind of their type. You're, you're serious, you're a regular guy. Uh, you're, you're deeply their type, man. And I, I know, because I, I used to work there. I'm not their type, so. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't their type. So round one for sure. You sh you're gonna apply to round one, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, round one. So what are you gonna say for Harvard? But the Harvard question is, what else do you want us to know that we don't know about you? Um, I, I have been thinking about it. I've got one story about uh, we started a sort of League of Legends esports business in um, in Adelaide um, and ran up to the um, top thirty teams in Australia um, by you know hiring young people and managing teams and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, um, okay, so that's kind of. But for for the Harvard essay, you've got to cover a lot of bases. You, you, even though they say we have your. The Harvard essay says something to the effect of we've got your resume, we've got your recommendations, and we've got your application, which is pretty, you know, exhaustive. And then they say, well, what, what else do you want us to know? I wouldn't take that literally. 
what, what I would say is I, I want you to know more about what you already know. That's, and I, and that's what I would say. I want you to know more about what it's like working in Australia. I want you to know more about my accomplishments at Telstra. I want you to know more about uh, some influences in me. You know, who, who would you name three or four influences, both people and experiences? Um, well, the, the earliest influence is my father who sort of uh, built my interest in business. Um, and then following that, uh, as he okay, is the CEO. What's of the best, okay, what's the best thing you're, this is also HBS interview stuff. Mm -hmm. What's the best thing your father ever said to you or the most valuable thing? I think he said, uh, look, um, you know, no matter what it is, uh, if you think you want it, give it a go and see if you can get it. Yeah, what was the circumstances that uh, led to that? Um, uh, backing out of. <laughs> uh, I, I had um, I had two options. I could go work for SA Power Networks, where I interned in South Australia, or I could go work for Telstra. But Telstra made me move across the country. Yeah. Okay. So that's an acceptable story. Well, name name another influence. Father is always good. Um, so uh, my current boss. Um, yeah. What's uh, the best thing he ever said to you? <clears throat> you got a great he chance, said, or he's going to be watching this. You know. <laughs> he said, you need to he show up earlier that. for work. <laughs> <laughs> he said that uh, it doesn't matter if, um, if you don't have to do it every time. Uh, he, was, he was referring to, um, to, you know, doing full due diligence on something. It's like, even if you think you know the answer, do the, do the maths anyway, um, because it, demonstrates to the rest of the business, to the engineers that, that doing, doing the maths is. Yeah, um, so he was telling you, it's better to look good than to feel good. I, that's good advice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think his point was, you know, sometimes you have to, sometimes you have to model the behavior you want yep, to see. Yep, yep. Good, good. That's, it, it, it's particularly that's a good real well. story. That's not a good HPS story, even though they, right. they didn't believe it. <laughs> they, they, built a, they built an institution on it. <laughs> Okay, well, you're going to do fine, uh, and uh, you're going to enjoy your, your stay here in the uh, uh, U.S. of A. Uh, uh, so I think your chances of getting into Wharton are real, are like 40 to 50 percent. I think your chances at Harvard are 30 percent. At Stanford, they may like you just because it's so, this is so solid and the Australian thing and the techie businessman thing. Uh, even though there's no X factor, but I think your chances at Stanford are more like breaking out of the white man bucket at Stanford is hard, more like 25%. Okay. That's pretty good for a school with a 6% admit rate. Yeah, there you go. Right. Well, that's, he's giving you four times the average admit rate at Stanford. He feels great about that, John. I can just see him. <laughs> I'm thrilled to know that. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, uh, you're getting in. You're going to go. Maybe we'll Welcome see Welcome to you. America. Yeah. Get your passport in shape, Declan. Absolutely. Your Get ready. And uh, uh, hope you have enough money saved. <laughs> check, check. To let us know how this works out. And uh, yeah. if, you want, if you want a marked interview, it's on my website. There you go. Thanks, guys. All right. Well, you, good luck to you and good luck to everyone else out there who's thinking about going for an MBA this cycle. And Sandy, thanks again for your wisdom. Okay, John. I can't wait till next week when your hair grows back. Oh, me too. My God. I, it, my, my hair is suffering trauma right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, over and out. Adios. On your MBA journey. <laughs>